What is going on guys and welcome to another episode of Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes where today we are at our 26th in-depth character review. It is crazy. We are pretty much a quarter of the way done with all the characters as of now and Fives is going to close up our clone faction because he is the cherry on top when it comes to the clones and because there are no more clones to review after today because Krennic and Death Trooper are coming out and because you guys are asking for so long we are starting our Empire faction review so please down below in the comments let me know what Empire characters you want to see I can get you Grand Moff Tarkin, Veers, whatever you guys want I am your Empire master I know everything about them so let me know what you want to see down below but before we get going let's pull up the Hall of Fame and see where we are so far in our last review, we looked at the clone sergeant and we placed him as a knight. Now, where is Fives going to fall in the Hall of Fame? He has been the most accessible clone ever since day one, and he has a lot to him. You might hear a lot of hubba bubba about him, and we're going to talk about just that. And we also have footage of his Zeta ability. If you've already seen the past few clone reviews, you may be familiar that I've been getting a lot of gameplay from Mick Mole 2, and he has provided a lot of Zeta Five's gameplay today so once again thank you so much for providing gameplay and please check out his channel down below he has a lot more clone content if you want to become more familiar with them and you guys know how we do things over here let's go ahead and talk about the history of fives and see why he is such a favorite character in star wars the clone wars Fives was just like the rest of his clone brothers and was developed on the planet of Kamino off the DNA blueprint of Jango Fett. The nickname, in case you did not know, came from his clone trooper designation, which was CT5555, so that's how you get Fives. During his days as a cadet, he was a part of the Domino Squad, which Echo was also in. Both him and Echo were eventually promoted to ARC Troopers due to their contributions in defending the Rishi Moon listening post, which was seen as a critical critical victory believe it or not. Fives unfortunately got caught up in discovering a conspiracy when Tup, a fellow clone, had his inhibitor chip malfunction. When it was discovered Fives knew the truth of Order 66, he was framed to make it look like he was trying to assassinate Chancellor Palpatine. But before he could tell Captain Rex and Anakin about Order 66, he was shot. As a result, Fives died. And with that, the truth went to the grave with him as well. And in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, we continue to see Fives be one who is willing to put himself on the front line and slow down the enemy, as well as being one who will put up a tough fight before he takes his last breath. So if you might hear, a lot of people usually recommend to get Fives. Well, how do you unlock him? Well, he's actually fairly easy to farm. You can get him in Cantina shipments. For 400 Cantina currency, you can get five shards of him. That's how I farmed him to seven stars. He can also be found on the hard battles, more specifically, dark side 2d and light side 4f also you can get him in the bronzium packs quite frequently funny story i actually unlocked fives through the bronzium packs on february 5th of 2016 so i thought it was kind of funny it landed on the fifth day and a lot of people were asking if i can start doing this where i give you an estimated time to when you can get this character to seven stars and here's what i'm going to say if you can at least get five to ten shards of him a day when you combine cantina the hard battles bronze impacts you might be able to expect to get him to seven stars around 30 days but if you only get five shards of him a day you might be looking at more along the 60 days but i have a feeling you'll be getting him a lot faster so we now transition over to the key stats of a character before mods abilities all that jazz is considered and this does not yet consider the new data from Krennic and Death Trooper, since at the time of this recording, their numbers have not been released, but the next video will definitely have that in place. First off, we talk about the pros. What is Fives good at? And he's good at some very important things when you consider them in the big picture. Firstly, when we look at health, he is number eight, really high up there, with the average being 19,166, and Fives being at 26,741, so way above that average and the median, putting him in the top 10% in health in the game protection a very very close relative of health he is number seven in there so he's rocking these stats so far averages 19,617 and fives is at 29,687 so again he is rocking and flying past what the average is now when you combine this next thing 
armor, it's really telling a beautiful picture by Bob Ross. He's first off number two in armor, and the average is 227, and fives is 343, putting him pretty much close to that top 1% mark. And when you combine high health, and armor and protection that means he is going to be in the battle for a long time because he's reducing damage and his time to kill is very very low which is a good thing for him he also has 15 percent health regeneration so when you add that on top of his high health already and his armor he's gonna be living for quite a while now just like many of the other clones fives really doesn't have anything major that falls in the average category so we gotta go straight into the stuff that my buddy Chewbacca's got to cry about. But it's okay because a lot of this stuff kind of does not seem that bad when you look at his kit later on. So let's go through this. Hold my hand. We'll make it through. I promise, Chewie. First off, maximum damage. Really not that bad. Almost made the average cutoff, but just missed it is maximum damage. He is number 57 in this category. Very close to being average. Average amount of maximum damage is 5,453, and five is at 4,795, and we'll find out more later, but he can do a lot more damage eventually. Next up, maximum basic damage. Now, it's going to look really bad, but again, when we look at the kit, not all too bad. Maximum basic damage, he is number 91. The average amount is 4,251, and fives is at 3,062, so pretty low down there, but there are some remedies for this. Speed is also not looking too hot. He is number 76. The average is 127, and fives is at 115, so not the worst thing in the world numerically, but when we consider the kit, speed isn't really all too much of an issue. Potency, very important because he applies speed down. The average amount of potency and the median as well, I should say, is 30%. And fives is directly half of this at 15%, so quite low. And if you want to make this work for many events, you will have to bump this up. I have to tell you that right now. Armor penetration, also a very bad thing. He's number 94 in armor penetration. The average being 53 and fives is at 20, which means it'll take him a lot more attacks to get through someone's thick armor, like someone like Fives, Sunfact, General Kenobi, all those big heavy armor based characters. Just like our Bob Ross analogy, we need to go ahead and paint some broader strokes, and that is by looking at the kit of Fives to understand all these numbers a bit better. And we first get to the dual DC 17 blasters, and this will be his most frequent ability you will see in the game. It deals physical damage to a target enemy and inflicts speed down for two turns. If the enemy is already inflicted with speed down, Fives can attack again, and this will do usually 2077 to 3062. So it used to be way more powerful before it was quote unquote fixed. It used to attack again after applying speed down immediately. Now he can only attack twice if the enemy has speed down on them beforehand. Most times though, you will see him use this twice because he will be spreading speed down like it's a virus on the other team. Next up, we have Combined Fire. Not as interesting, but still good to know about. It deals physical damage to a target enemy and calls a random ally to assist. If the assisting ally is a clone, both do 75% more damage. So before the damage bonus, this does 4,339 to 4,795. And then if some clone goes ahead and assists off of Five's attack, then this can do 8,391 damage for Five. So it's not the most special assisting attack in the game, but it does come in handy when trying to finish off an enemy. And characters like Cody and Clone Sergeant will love to assist to get that extra turn meter bonus and to just put out a lot of damage like you usually see with fives and the clone sergeant working together next is his leader ability and it's called veteran clone trooper clone allies gain 65 defense and other allies gain half that amount and this is kind of the bland area of fives it's a very basic leader ability and does not offer much to clones and non-clones especially it's okay for the beginner character if you want to go ahead and replace Chewbacca. However, in the grand scheme of things, when you look at the very end game, you are not using fives over other characters like General Kenobi, Anakin Skywalker, as well as many others. Lastly, the thing that really makes him shine is tactical awareness. Fives has an 85% counter chance and plus 50% counter damage. 
This is where the Zeta kicks in. Fives gains 15% turn meter whenever another clone ally takes damage and 7.5% turn meter whenever a non-clone ally takes damage. So you'll see a lot of footage in this gameplay here and essentially the basic attack will do roughly 4,593 damage and a lot of the times he will be hitting twice and he will be counter-attacking very frequently. The Zeta turn meter gain is amazing because this ensures he is rushing to the rescue when his allies are under attack and he'll attempt to slow down the enemy attack. When paired with the right allies, this is a very deadly ability and allows him to take on many enemies on his own. All right, so you have the character, you know his stats, you know what his kit looks like, and you're convinced you want to get this guy. Well, hold up, you need to know the gear. You need to know what you're getting into. And we first start off by looking at the raid gear. Now, the average amount of raid gear is currently three, and he's actually somewhat easy to gear in this aspect because he only needs two pieces, so below the average, which is excellent. And those two pieces are the Mark V droid collar, which he will need at gear 9 and the mark 7 nubian scanner at gear 10 so not too much is needed which is great not like seven pieces like a lot of other characters in the game gold gear the shiny stuff you really need to get your hands on eventually the average is 200 pieces and fives is pretty much right on average he needs 220 pieces and he will need a mark 9 fabrotech data pad as well as a mark 5 med pack to get from gear 10 to gear 11 so you will need some stuff if you want to get him all the way to the top Purple Gear, another great thing he's doing in. The average is 1,110, and Fives needs 1,025 pieces, putting him at number 60 for requirements. So pretty much right around that average. And he needs a lot of Mark III Carbonti sensor arrays, 350 to be exact. So make sure you are doing your daily challenges, which for most people, it's on Mondays and Thursdays. So you can go ahead and pile those up. Time to now switch gears from my objective part of the review to the subjective part of the review where I give you tips, recommendations on mods, my thoughts, Yoda's checklist, best friends, mortal enemies, all that stuff jammed in the next few minutes here and we first start off with my thoughts. Firstly, before I even get any farther, Fives is just a character you have to get at some point. He is a cornerstone character for both raids, AAT as well as the Rancor, and has many moments in Arena. You'll see him be used extensively, then he might have a brief period where he's not used. He comes back, he's just a back and forth character. He has a lot going on for him. He's just a great standalone character, as well as one that works well in many types of lineups. Even those oddball ones, when you're first starting off in the game, you won't have a perfect lineup. You'll have Chewbacca, you'll have Jedi Counselor, so those are your oddball lineups, and Fives can fit in and still do some good work. Even before his Zeta ability, he is still pretty deadly. The constant counterattacks and speed down means he is going to be very active in battle, so speed is not a huge issue. In fact, he actually does more damage just from counterattacking, so you might not even want him to be fast. Also, I'm sure many of you who have fought Fives have experienced moments where you take out all the enemies and you leave fives for last thinking you have a cakewalk only to find that he single-handedly defeated you like this guy is literally the living quote of clean up on aisle five i've heard many stories and i've experienced them myself where fives will go ahead hold down the fort and clean up whatever is left over the main problem with fives though and it's kind of a big one and why we don't see him be used all the time is that he doesn't taunt unless he's with General Kenobi, but even so, General Kenobi will taunt and people would rather hit General Kenobi than Fives. And without that, people avoid him for a long time and nowadays, if you save him for last, it's not too hard to take him out when you shock him, you daze him, stun him, ability block him, offense down, and then he's really easy to take out. So that's pretty much the big problem that's kind of holding him back from being a cross-meta character. And this kind of transitions nicely over to our next topic where we talk about the mortal enemies and pretty much right now there aren't really any anti-clone synergy characters so you don't have to worry about that as of now but debuffs like shock and days are deadly to prevent him from gaining the turn meter off his zeta and counter attacking but be, to be honest, stun is by far the most preferred. Once stunned, he is doing absolutely nothing for your team. Characters that are cleansers and can give tenacity up to their allies are also a problem because without applying speed down, he is not getting as many bonus attacks as he should. 
Also, what I personally like to do is use thermal detonators against them because I don't bother with them until the end and I'll just use someone like Jawa Engineer to pilot the thermal detonators and that will help me get him down a lot faster and he won't counterattack off a thermal detonator. So a lot of ways to counter fives, but if you are using fives, you want to know who his best friends are because with his best friends, he will do quite well. And first of all, like all the other clones, you want every single clone, if possible, to be with fives. That's the best case scenario because under a command Commander Cody, Zeta Leader, and Echo by his side, he will gain lots of turn meter, lots of health regeneration, lots of protection regeneration just off his basic attack. Anakin Lead is also great for more damage when Fives constantly counters. That is some pretty big counter attack damage coming at you. That destroyed me for a while there. General Kenobi is also fantastic because he can make Fives taunt. Only problem is usually when Fives taunts, there's a good chance that General Kenobi might be taunting and people would much rather rather smack General Kenobi in the face than the mean old fives. Plo Koon, also a friend, not the closest one, but something I'd like to put out there. Turn meter removal characters are great because turn meter removal and speed down is all a great combination to put together. When I was a beginner player, I used to do the Captain Phasma lead and fives by the side because when Captain Phasma's leading, she might call fives into assist, which is a very great combination when you're first starting. And counter attack teams are just great in general. Having characters like Ayla Sakura, fives, they're they're just two of the characters I do not like to see together because they will get lots of counterattacks. Kit Fisto, Count Dooku, you kind of get the drill from there. Now, if you're fortunate to have Zeta Matt abilities, I highly recommend pairing up fives with Barris Zeta. She has an amazing Zeta ability that can recover health upon a critical hit. So that would be critical for fives that constantly gain so much health to keep them alive a lot longer so check that out if you have the opportunity now i say i say i say it's time to talk about the mods and you have a lot of flexibility here since he already has a lot of protection a lot of armor a lot of health you could go ahead and give him health mods to amplify the health pool that he has so that's one idea for the mod sets i personally believe you want to try to up his damage because he will be counter-attacking quite a lot so best way to do this is to go ahead and give him critical chance and critical damage mods or if you don't have those offense mods might be better not everyone can get offense mods critical chance though and critical damage are a lot better in my opinion as we will soon find out i really recommend using this character especially as a beginner player for the rancor raid and you really should get potency mod sets if you want to use them for that in terms of primary and secondary mods again you have a lot of flexibility here i would recommend getting either critical chance critical damage when you after you pick your mod sets also a lot of protection would be great bringing up that protection will keep them around for a lot longer health mods are great you can also put speed on him but since he will be gaining a lot of turn meter assuming you have the zeta ability you really don't need to worry about speed all that much and even if you don't have the zeta ability he will be counter attacking quite a lot if people are hitting him or using their aoe so don't worry if you can't get a lot of speed on all those other things are a lot more important last and certainly not least up at bats we have the yoda's do or do not checklist where my buddy yoda and i quickly go through many aspects of the game and let you know if fives is good in there and let's go straight into arena i've alluded to this quite a lot but fives does become the meta quite often he shows up disappears for a little bit shows up disappears again so you want him in your inventory because you never know when he'll come back for the arena meta galactic war is also nice if you can apply speed down it's going to help you a lot in the long run for galactic war light side battles definitely go ahead and say do for that cantina battles just like light side battles do he has a lot of endurance to stick around especially for those very hard battles as you'll soon find out later on in the game mod challenges nothing clone specific so i will say do not but you can use them for the general catch-all health mod challenges ships definitely do i unlocked a ship not too long ago and it is a fantastic ship so if you can get his ship as well if you're not prioritizing anything else rancor raid i don't even think i have to say this again but definitely do he applies speed down and that is a critical component of the rancor raid AAT raid definitely a great character as well especially with Zeta and with a lot of clones you've probably seen plenty of clone footage I put out with him in the AAT heroic raid and he is a very critical component to apply speed down get counter attacks and to call in his clones to assist so definitely do for that and here we go now it's time to go ahead and pull up the hall of fame and see where we are going to rank our final clone and from grandmaster to youngling Fives is going to be granted the 
Master status. Now Fives is super close to clinching that Grandmaster title. Probably the upper tail of the Master status. Just the fact that he can't taunt really decreases his viability as a tank. Yes, he has a high health pool and protection pool, but it doesn't really help when you avoid him, you stun him, shock him, daze him, throw thermal detonators on him, and you're essentially avoiding him, and he's not doing his counter-attacking jobs, which is why he has an off and on period. But other than that, he is just a real solid character overall, and you just just have to get him in your inventory at some point because it does come in handy and you never know when he might be the meta again because there are plenty of moments when they do show up so ladies and gentlemen there you go i hope you enjoyed this last clone faction review that we just had i had a lot of fun i know you guys did but now it's time to move on to the empire so down below in the comments please let me know what empire characters we should start reviewing and stay tuned for my empire farming guide coming out next week so you can go ahead and build up your army other than that, please go ahead and comment down below, like this video if you can, and subscribe for more Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes content, and we will talk again soon. Peace out. Oh